Good evening. Welcome into the latest edition of the Sunday Sit Down. I am here with Coach Otis Hughley Jr., the head coach of the Alabama a men's basketball team. Coach, first of all, I feel like I have to say, welcome back to the Rocket City. Welcome back to the United States. I know it's been a really busy summer for you, and I think we should start when you took your team to the, to the Dominican Republic. Why did you feel like that was the right thing to do this offseason? Well, every four years, most post-secondary collegiate basketball teams get a chance to take their – the teams abroad to to prepare for the season and uh, we decided to do a little little different it was more of a humanitarian character building trip for us in tandem with you know competing against uh, you know uh, some really really good basketball clubs and uh, it was really really good for us our kids it probably did more for our kids um, than they they could imagine from what I understand, the clubs you participated against were local professional teams, correct? And how did the team do against them? No, it did really well. Did really well. Uh, of course, down there, whistles going to be whatever they are. But you, that's baked in the cake. And went two and two. It was really, really good. Everyone got to play the same amount of time. So the goal wasn't to win the game, but to evaluate personnel and to give them the opportunity to you know, improve, gel together, and uh, showcase the skills. I think we should go back to that humanitarian piece that you talked about. What were the things that you guys did to really uh, interact with and try and put impact on the community down there in the DR? And what, if any, feedback did you get from your players about those experiences? Well, there was some townships and villages and a couple of orphanages that they went and gave food to and gave out clothing and, and really just spent the day with several of those those children and boy there was so much warmth and, and love and and uh, you can tell that those particular orphanages had some history of really taking care of those kids and loving them because when we showed up you know the, we, you would have thought they came to, to serve and help us but um, I think it was very impactful and I think those came, those kids definitely came back different than when they went. I say, were there any particular moments when you saw something in your players' eyes that they all of a sudden realized that it, it clicked? Like, this is the reason we're here, and, and this is what we should do as people, too? Yeah, well, the interaction, the exchange, and and um, and just their second most valuable asset, their time. And, you know, there was some services down there that the kids voluntarily went to, and there was about nine kids that turned their life around. And that was exciting to see, you know, a character jump. Another big thing that happened to you this summer is that it was announced that you were taking over the Senegalese women's national team, uh, participated in a tournament. Let's first talk, though, about your international credentials. I'm not sure everyone at home necessarily realizes uh, about this man's credentials right here. He's coached at the high school level. You've coached at the JUCO level. You've obviously coached Division One. You've coached the NBA with the Warriors and the Kings. And you've also had this international experience. What has that done for you in your career? Well, you know, part of being at A&M is their mission is to start here and go anywhere. And I've probably been many places that you can call anywhere. And that was my fifth country. Uh, of course, we were able to compete in, you know, Nigeria, Chinese Taipei, China, USA, uh, uh, Nigeria, and now Senegal. And this will be, you know, I'm shooting for my third Olympics and my uh, fourth World Cup. So this is something that will put A&M's name across the world in the minds of young, young boys, young girls, and leadership and, uh, among many basketball circles and certainly of, of governments because presidents follow their national teams and outside of U.S. They follow them really, really closely. And, you know, the first thing I want to know is, hey, what, what school he come from? And I'm yelling it on the mountaintop, Alabama A&M University. After coaching Nigeria, they were 44th in the, in the world, and now they're 8th in the world. And I'm excited to see, you know, man, that God allowed me to have a, a big hand in, in that happening. Now I'm trying to help Senegal do the same. We're hoping to bring them back in June. And, um, and I know... There'll be a lot of coverage on it, and I'm hoping you guys will get in there first before all the others have come, um, the ESPN and all those other. Uh, but we're hoping to do at least two to three weeks here um, um, before we go compete for the Continental Tournament called the Afro Basket. Looking to get my third gold medal in this one here with a different country. So hopefully we're able to do that then 
there'll be more and more people understanding where Alabama and m is, and that's the number one place to live in America, Huntsville, Alabama. And, uh, and uh, they'll know the name when they hear it. You guys played in the 2026 World Cup pre-qualifying event. This was in Rwanda. This was with the Senegalese uh, national women's team. Uh, you guys defeated Hungary, Brazil, the Philippines, Rwanda, got all the way to the finals and then, and then lost to Hungary. Um, what do you hope that, that your team gains from this experience? And you said it was historic uh, to get to a final. Well, it was historic on, on multi multiple levels. One is... We weren't supposed to win a game because <laughs> we had lost 90% of our team to for different reasons. Girls were tired. They wanted rest before they start their pro seasons. So we had to go with a lot of young players. And we only had really five days to practice. And to play number eight in the world, who was number four in the Eurobasket, Hungary, and, uh, and then Brazil, who was number two, but won the America because U.S. didn't bring the the real team, uh, so but they won the America Cup nevertheless, and then to have the Philippines to take fourth in all of Asia to come and have to play them. It was the first time FIBA had allowed an African continent to host a tournament of that level or that caliber, and boy, we were able to do it on the road with only five days of practice and uh, make it to the finals. That was the possibility is, you know is endless.